Here's what's happening right now. We are pushing 90 degrees and we have not started to add in the humidity yet. We'll look at a very summer like forecast coming up. Carrie. All right, Ben. Also, first and for why former mayor Kwame Kilpatrick is about to return to Detroit for the first time since 2013. A local father's love leads to a deadly confrontation. One man is dead, another in custody. We'll tell you where the investigation stands this afternoon. Up first, breaking news from the White House. President Trump has removed his new communications director after just 11 days on the job. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, it looks like the words you're fired are echoing through the halls of the White House once again. President Donald Trump has removed his brand new communications director just hours after swearing in a new chief of staff. Devin Skillian is in the newsroom with this breaking news and timing is no coincidence here, Devin. No, Karen, you know, even though we are getting used to surprises, I think this came as a surprise to many. The White House says Anthony Scaramucci is out to give John Kelly, the new White House chief of staff, uh, in their words, a clean slate. Anthony Scaramucci, uh, of course, came in, which meant the departure of White House spokesman Sean Spicer. That was just 11 days ago. The wealthy New York hedge fund manager made a very big impression in a short amount of time that freewheeling press conference, then that profanity-laced interview with the New Yorker magazine in which he based, uh, debashed the uh, now former White House Chief of Staff Ranks Priebus. Within days, Priebus was gone. Now Scaramucci follows him out the door. This morning, the president welcomed his new Chief of Staff, General John Kelly, moving from Homeland Security to the West Wing. He will do a spectacular job, I have no doubt, as Chief of Staff. Uh, what he's done in terms of homeland security is record shattering. You look at the border, you look at the tremendous results we've had, and you look at the spirit. General Kelly there on the left. Uh, many wonder if the former military man can bring order to a White House when the president is constantly tweeting, sometimes attacking his own staff, as we've seen. In fact, the president and Attorney General Jeff Sessions saw each other for the first time today since the president launched his Twitter tirade at Sessions with concerns about how Sessions is doing his job. Uh, a statement from the White House says Scaramucci felt it was best that he leave now so that Kelly could build his own team. And Noteworthy that that clean slate phrase was also used when Sean Spicer stepped down. Uh, we're told Spicer is at the White House today, by the way, to help during the communications transition. Uh, no word yet, Karen, on who might replace uh, the man they call the mooch. Updates right. coming up at 5 and at, 6 and at 6.30 as well. All right. Thank you very much, Devin. Appreciate it. Also, first at 4, Huron Township Police are investigating the stabbing death of this local father. They say he was trying to protect his son. It happened last night in Huron Township. Police say a group of young people went to the Huron Estates Mobile Home Park to fight Robert Briscoe's son. Police say when the 49-year-old stepped in to help, he was stabbed and then died a few feet from his doorstep. He had his whole life in front of him. He obviously was concerned for his kids. He was out there protecting his kids and uh, something really needless made a lot of people lose their father and their grandfather today and, and husband as well. Police arrested an 18-year-old suspect in Taylor. He could be charged tomorrow. Three others are also being questioned. Briscoe leaves behind a wife, five children, and three grandchildren. Birmingham police are calling this guy a smooth-talking jewelry thief. and They need your help to catch him. They say he hit two jewelry stores on Old Woodward last week. He got away with about $11,000 in jewelry, including watches, rings, even some diamond necklaces. Police say in both stores he was very talkative, asking a lot of questions to distract store employees. Take a close look. Here's another surveillance photo. Our Coco McAvoy is working the story and has more clues that might help catch this thief. Watch her story on Local 4 News at 6. Former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick is headed back to the city. He used to run. This story has been trending this afternoon. Kilpatrick will be brought from a prison in Oklahoma to Detroit for a court hearing on August 23rd. Now, 47-year-old, he was sentenced to more than 20 years behind bars for his public corruption case back in 2013. He hasn't been back in Detroit since then. Next month's hearing will deal with how much restitution he should pay the city. Today, the Detroit People Mover, celebrating 30 years of serving the community. The transit system open to the public on this day back in 1987, believe it or not. In honor of its birthday, the People Mover is allowing the public to enjoy free rides all day long. 
During the People Mover's 30 years in operation, it's completed more than 65 million passenger trips. Well, we are definitely getting spoiled with some pretty nice summer weather. Ben Bailey standing by with the first forecast, and uh, it is a hot one out there, though, Ben. Yeah, the weekend was nice. We've sort of continued it and just tacked on a couple extra degrees for good measure here on Monday. We're at 88 right now at Metro 87 in Ann Arbor and very similar temperatures all across the area. Plenty of sunshine out there that's likely going to continue into tomorrow. So far, what we haven't really seen is noticeable humidity that's going to start rolling in later tonight, mainly towards morning, but generally most of the night we'll see low humidity. We've got a pretty stormy forecast, at least in the middle part of the week. We'll run down those chances. And could we make it two in a row as far as stellar weekends go? We'll check out your seven day forecast in just minutes. Karen. Some people call it the Christmas creep, but can you believe what you are seeing right here? Yes, the calendar says July 31st. Yet, even as you shop for back to school supplies, you'll notice some stores are already selling Christmas decorations. Our Paula Topman looks at the trend. She also has a ward, word of warning for those early bird shoppers. Paula. Hi, Karen. I was just listening to Ben, and I don't know where he is because where I am, it is Christmas all day long. I mean, take a look at this. We're talking about 15 to 16 different Christmas themes just in one place, just today. Come, come with me. I'm going to take you on a time warp. It is a beautiful summer day. How about a little mood music to go with the swelter? Tis the day before August, and what do I see? Bulbs and regalia to deck out your tree. Ah, I have the music for that. While some stores are still shoveling out their back to school supplies, at home stores have raced ahead, putting out Christmas decorations even earlier than last year. And just kind of helps them see like everything they could do and that we offer for them. Kelly thinks it's a little too early. It's too soon. It's too soon to come out. But some of the Christmas loot can actually double as wedding loot. And so she's shopping for her son's nuptials. You know, for what I'm shopping for for a wedding, the, the little swans are perfect. Shirley loves it. I think it's okay because I think it gives you an opportunity to do your shopping in a relaxed environment and it gives you a better selection. The good news is you get a great selection. The bad news is if you wait until Christmas to open your Christmas stuff, you forfeit your ability for cash returns if you change your mind or if something is broken. Cash returns must be made in 60 days and Christmas is 147 days away. After 60 days, it goes on to a gift card. We went to the Christmas tree shops. You would think a place called the Christmas tree shops would have Christmas stuff, but no, they barely have Halloween stuff up. So it's back to at home. I think it takes the stress off. You can kind of divide up the money so you don't notice it all missing at once. I'm trying to get through today with that heat out there. No worries, if you need Halloween, it's in the next aisle, right next to the Thanksgiving stuff. Oh, and if you need a market umbrella for your deck, it's on top of the Christmas stuff. It kind of throws Anthony off a bit. I understand that people are excited for the holidays, but it only, but each holiday only comes once a year. If we celebrate it year round, December or, or October, it loses its meaning. It loses its, its speciality. Oh, yes, that speciality. I think at the moment I am in the only place in Michigan where we can go from winter or Christmas to, as you can see, Halloween. And then right here, we've got Thanksgiving stuff right there. In this next aisle over here, you see we've got the Christmas stuff. But Karen, let's take you back to present time right now in the summer. Ah, I'll have a margarita, please with a peppermint twist. <laughs> Thank goodness, I agree with you, Paula. And Anthony, it's nice to kind of enjoy the holiday at the moment, so I'm gonna stick with you and Anthony and enjoy summer for a little bit longer. Thank you, Paula. Well, have you ever been driving down the street and then you see someone texting while they're crossing the road? It's happened many times, but one city is making that illegal and it could cost text addicts some money. Also, a medical emergency for this yellow lab, what she chewed on, what she swallowed, and how a sheriff's deputy came to her rescue. At first, a doctor's decision leads to violence, how an argument over painkillers turned deadly for two people. That story next.
thrown up. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. It was unusual in a Warren courtroom today to find four families not knowing why their sons were in jail. And as they learned, they were clearly stunned and visibly emotional. Coming up at 6, we'll tell you what they're charged with doing from a 696 overpass. And you'll also hear from one of the victims. First and four, we're on top of stories making headlines across America. In Indiana, a doctor is being laid to rest today. Police say Dr. Todd Graham was shot and killed after he refused to write a prescription for painkillers. Police say the doctor told a patient that her chronic pain did not require a prescription for opioids. Investigators say the patient's husband argued with the doctor and later returned to Graham's office and shot him. The husband then drove to a friend's home and took his own life. Tropical storm Emily came ashore on Florida's Gulf Coast this morning, and we are starting to see some of the damage the storm is causing. Check out this video from Fort Myers Beach. Part of the roof of that resort blew off and actually landed on another building. Fortunately, no one was hurt. The roofing company has already started working on fixing it. Hollywood is mourning the loss of Sam Shepard today. The actor and Pulitzer Prize winning playwright died today at his home in Kentucky from complications of the disease ALS. On screen, Shepard was known for his works in films such as Black Hawk Down and 1983's The Right Stuff, which earned him a Best Supporting Actor Oscar nod. He was also called the greatest playwright of his generation. Sam Shepard was 73. In good health today, scientists say slugs are the actual inspiration for a medical breakthrough. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain what this is about. Well, you know, of course, if you've ever tried to put a Band-Aid on wet skin, you know it doesn't stick, and it's a challenge. So researchers at Harvard have actually created a new bioglue based on the defensive mucus that is secreted by slugs. Now, you have to see it. This is bioglue, and it can be made into either sheets, which are shown in teal, or in custom shapes, that's the darker blue. It's flexible, three times stronger than any existing medical adhesive, and it sticks to wet surfaces. It's non-toxic and inexpensive to make. Now, so far, the bioglue has only been tested in animals, but researchers are already working on biodegradable versions that would disappear as the body heals. Pretty slick, though, I think. Yeah. And that would be very helpful for a lot of those kiddos who yeah, are exactly. always needed that. Get wet. Uh, another study that caught our eye today is uh, the health benefits of going to the beach. Yeah, so you can think of this as vitamin C, like what we did there. It's a little pun there. Yes. Researchers say spending time by the ocean is good for our mental health in multiple ways. Watching the waves temporarily changes our brain waves, similar to the changes that we see with meditation. The smell, of course, of the ocean breeze and the feeling of sand can also trigger positive thoughts and a feeling of relaxation, and even the cooler blue color is associated with calmness. Now studies find those who live by the coast do report better physical and mental health than those who don't. Lucky for us, of course, we have plenty of lakes around here yes. that do also confer a similar relaxing view. Well, that makes sense too because a lot of times when you're going to sleep they play the ocean waves right. just to exactly. calm you down. Mm -hmm. It changes your brain waves. All right, thanks mm -hmm. Doc. Let's check in with Ben Bailey on the forecast. Ben. Yeah, Karen, I think a lot of folks enjoying the water this weekend, and even today, if you had some time off, it's 88 out there right now. Sunshine definitely doing some work with hardly a cloud out there. 87 in the city, slightly cooler numbers as you head into our north zone, which may be a location where we could be watching for some showers later on, but we'll get to that in a second. Beautiful shot on storm pins from Howell. This is sent into us by Chrissy, and the sunflowers are definitely blooming out there. Look at all of those flowers. Beautiful shot out there in Howe. Most of us are completely cloud free. There is this uh, area of thunderstorms. It's starting to roll into the Saginaw Bay. And even though that's going to stay north of most of us, if you're in the extreme northern edge of our north zone, mainly northern Sanilac County, I'd be watching for a shower or storm as we get into the evening hours. But the rest of us uh, don't think we're going to be getting in on that action. The rest of the evening hours is looking clear. Still going to be mild, seasonably mild tonight, but we'll keep away uh, at least the thunderstorm chances for a while. That's until we get into the upcoming weekend, or I should say uh, the middle of the week, uh, and we'll uh, check that out in just a few minutes. Uh, tonight, 66 is what we're looking at for an overnight low. Sky's going to be clear and again, seasonably mild with a, just a little bit of a light wind. Not going to see much of a breeze tomorrow and temperatures right back where they are today in the upper 80s. A little bit more humidity, so those heat index readings just start creeping towards 90. 
windy, but we will see plenty of sunshine through the day. So let's break down those highs in your four zone forecast starting in our metro zone, which today was the toastiest spot and tomorrow probably will be the same close to 90 there in the city. Officially, we'll probably get to 88 again uh, there at the airport. South zone temperatures a little bit cooler away from some of the uh, more populated uh, uh, areas in uh, the metro zone. So those numbers only rising to the mid 80s tomorrow afternoon. West zone highs will generally be in the mid 80s, maybe slightly warmer here towards 275 in Novine Canton. And once you get north of M59, uh, we're still looking at mid 80s. So water obviously cooling things just a little bit up there in Sanilac County, but not by much. Still 80 degree highs tomorrow afternoon. And we will stay with those at least slightly above normal numbers all the way through the uh, Thursday time frame. Things start to cool off a little bit here on Friday and after a morning thunderstorm, uh, we start cooling down and dropping that humidity for the weekend. We're not going to be completely dry, however, especially by Sunday afternoon. We'll start working in some thunderstorms, but I think right now we'll get through most of Saturday on dry conditions. So a little bit more of summer, even though we're ending July, moving into August starting tomorrow. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Well, you know it could be dangerous, but that doesn't stop many people from doing it. Still ahead, a new texting crackdown and the fines people will pay. A first, a medical emergency for this dog is changing how some police officers do business with their canine cop partners. But first, as we go to break, take a look. This is how the marks have closed for your Monday. We'll be right back. So First and four okay. continues with the story of how police saved the life of this yellow lab in Maine. The dog's owner says Addie had chewed through a bottle of oxycodone and then swallowed more than a dozen pills. She flagged down a sheriff sergeant and asked him to give Addie the anti-opioid medication Narcan. Well, he did, and the dog was saved. The drug is normally meant for humans, but now officers across Maine will carry the Narcan for their canine partners just in case. They inhale lethal drugs during searches. In today's trending story, some scary moments for actress Kate Beckinsale. She had to postpone an appearance at Tampa Bay Comic Con because of a brush with a stalker. A 45 year old man from Iowa was arrested over the weekend. Police say Terry Lee Rep has an irrational obsession with the actress and he was even willing to travel the country to harass her. Police say he also has a history of violent threats. He is now charged with aggravated stalking, which is a felony. Well, this story is getting a lot of attention online trending this afternoon. You've heard of no texting while driving. Well, now one city will start finding people who are caught walking while texting. This is happening in the city of Honolulu, Hawaii. The new ordinance focuses on people who are texting while crossing the street, and everyone knows that can be dangerous. The fines range from $15 to $35 for the first offense, and it goes up to $100 for a third strike. The new law goes into effect in October. Everything's more expensive in Hawaii. <laughs> now texting will be too. Well, you wonder what are they going to do, like have people stationed by intersections Probably looking cameras, for... Probably you know? I don't know. Still ahead, a family's loving support for this baby boy is going viral today. The little guy's already finding out how great big sisters can be, and the people love this story. A young nurse out for her afternoon jog along this dirt road is shot dead. The murder one year ago is still haunting the people of this tight-knit community. It's so inconceivable. It's so inconceivable to us what happened to her. Her grieving parents heartbroken. This is what the scum coward took from us. Do you think it was someone she knew? Tonight at 11, who killed this young nurse? Hear what her parents say about the killer and what they think happened. 